So let's come across to you, Agostinos. You are in, in, in Cyprus, and of course, Cyprus and Greece, and that the Mediterranean area has been facing wildfires of a scale, which is, I think, we can use the word unprecedented. That's that word. You have your word, Andrew. I've got my word. Um, but it's unprecedented um, in terms of the scale and the scope and the impact and the consequences. It goes beyond anything we've modeled or prepared for. You, as somebody who's basically spent your professional life preparing for exactly those things, do we understand what the new generation of these large-scale, high-impact events are? And uh, to come back to the question I asked, I asked Andrew, are, are we ready for them? The fundamental reality, um, David, is that we do have a problem, and it's it's funny that you choose this specific word, unprecedented. Many times in Twitter, I have tweeted the unprecedented. It's not a phrase anymore. It's a, the normality. We are more and more experiencing such catastrophic and unprecedented events, not only in our Mediterranean region, as Andrew said, in Australia. Recently, we saw the firestorm to the Caribbean islands, which actually vanished um, the whole island. And uh, that really, really ring many bells um, of worrying of what if, what if the uh, specific circumstances enable a catastrophic event of such a scale. Are we ready? Who can predict that, actually? I don't think I can answer that, and I don't think that many of us uh, risk management professionals can answer this because the model that the scientific community is presenting, uh, it, it, they're failing. Some models are failing, some other models of um, calculating the, the, his, the, the path of this climate crisis are no longer valid. So I think we are facing an unprecedented future and it's no longer, um, the engagement needs to be not only from the professional side of view, but also with the communities. We need us, the fire professionals, risk profess professionals, medical professionals, we need to engage with the communities as much as we can to make the, the person X to know of the what if that can happen. Obviously in Cyprus is in Mediterranean, which hasn't do draft uh, for, a for many years. Um, and we have experiences, experienced some catastrophic events with regards to wildfires. In, in um, bearing in mind the small scale of the island, but um, we also in a seismos area, so we have experienced earthquakes. Last year was a catastrophic earthquake in Turkey, which uh, thousands, uh, unfortunately, have lost their lives. So we are actually living um, to a very turbulent region, not only with um, physical catastrophes, but also with uh, man-made catastrophes. So are we ready? The definition of the problem needs to be uh, addressed. And the problem is uh, multidimensional and engages so many disciplines. And it's a matter of communication of the risk and dedication of the risk and communicate the risk with those that need to, the decision makers. I believe that um, occurrences and events such as the one you have uh, invited us and we are here and discussing will definitely help to see things from a different perspective, understand things that we don't understand. And we are always here to learn. We can never know enough. Uh, I have fought many fires in my career, and, and yet in some wildfires, I find myself struggling of what decision I will make to resolve an incident. Hence the reason why back in October I went to Spain to the Catalonian Fire Service there with the Paul Costa Foundation and I have trained, I have participated as a student to learn more. We need to learn more and we need to learn from each other and um, face this uh, new era of uh, uncertainness and unprecedented events in a more holistic level.
Thank you for that. And of course, we are all students. We all learn every day. Every day is a school day. But it's interesting you use the word, which I was, I was waiting to hear when they were coming to this community, and I'm glad that that word came in early. Because it is absolutely clear that although we can take the overarching conceptual understanding or perspective around crisis, crisis, the truth of the matter is, as we see all over the world, the reality of the crisis is, is immediate and personal and now. It's how do we feed our kids? You know, how do we give our kids breakfast? Where do we sleep tonight? You know, how do we get clean water? And, and that puts incredible pressure on all of our systems. Um, FEMA, Federal Emergency Management Agency, which, of course, basically was meant to respond, was set up, though it existed before, mainly set up after 9-11, 2001, 2005, Hurricane Katrina, was supposed to respond to a situation, a, a basically flooding, a surge flooding in, 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 in New Orleans, which had been modeled for 30 years because New Orleans is technically built almost below sea level, so you have the levees there to protect it. So in terms of conceptually, that had been planned for for 40 years, 30, 40 years. Um, and they actually knew that the storm was coming towards them. So they knew that we have a specific event now, and yet they were still unable to do that. Michael Brown, the director of FEMA, when asked why FEMA could not deploy into New Orleans, says, well, we were ready for the unprecedented level, unexpected level of flooding and, and rainwater, but we couldn't deploy. And you go, well, what did you see? A flood would look like. And FEMA came back afterwards and they said, we made a mistake. We conceptually made a mistake. We thought our, our, our purpose of FEMA was to do crisis management. It's not. The purpose of FEMA is to support communities that are doing crisis management. Now, crisis management is owned at the community level. Those are the people there that we supported. 